Whoa, it's Woolsey. Welcome back to the editor guide grind. Last time we got halfway through the group edit group tab thing. Now we have to go into the extra options, which are on the side of this box. Let's get back into it. So we got into all of the magic that is the group ID system, the P as well, the Z order, Z layer, editor layers, etc. The copy paste. Now we have to go into these tabs and figure out what everything here does, and it's gonna be scary. I just clicked Anim, I don't even know what that does. I'm just gonna delete that and just pretend that didn't happen. Don't fade, don't enter. Basically, just disable fading in and out and any entries onto the screen. Grab all of these blocks. We're gonna put these onto... Don't fade, don't enter. Okay, so as I go onto the screen, the blocks are just static at the very edge. There's nothing happening. There's no fading, there's no entry, there's no cool transition. If I take them away from don't fade and don't enter, just like this, and I put down an entry trigger, for example, let's just choose one of these blocks like this, and I play the level, these blocks are going to shift on and off of the screen like this. You can see a big difference right now. So you can change the way that they work. If you turn on don't fade, it will make the fading disappear, but the entry will still happen. So let's just do that real quick, just to show. Here we go. So the blocks are just like perfectly visible the whole time. They kind of just appear and disappear. Pretty simple. But if we go in and we turn on don't enter instead of just don't fade, for example, like this, the transition will be ignored, but the blocks will fade. So you can choose like a different kind of transition on and off of the screen. Then we have no effects. This option deactivates the effect of portals. For example, the background lightning for size portals. So here are some portals just completely unedited. So as we go through, you can see that there are lines going across the screen right now, which are the gravity lines. And as you go through the size portals, there are lightning effects that change the size of the player. They're in like a random place every time. So if we go back into the editor and we select all of these, go into extra and hit no effects, there will be no effects. It's simple as that. There's no gravity lines. It's kind of plain, but it's cool. And then you also have the size portals with no effect. When you were trying to make transitions and stuff with like black screens, these could really get in the way because it could show the actual flips and stuff. But they actually, I don't know. It, it, it There's a lot of freedom now. Then we have group parent, which sets an object as the group ID parent, which is used for scaling and rotating. If I make a plus object out of these objects and I rotate just like this, it rotates just from the center. It calculates the center and it does it from there. But if I select this one, for example, and put this as the group parent and I rotate that way, it's gonna rotate around that point instead. Same as for scaling. This will be done around this point. Area parent is involved with area triggers, so we are going to skip over that for now. Don't boost Y, don't boost X. Disables the player being boosted by a moving object for the given axis. Okay, let's place an object. This is going to be group number one, and I'm going to place a touch triggered move trigger on top of this object. So when I touch the box, this block is going to move like, mm, I don't know, 0.2 in the air, ease out, it's going to go up 100 in the air like that. So if I touch this, I'm going to zoom up like this, and it's going to make me bounce. You saw that? If I turn on don't boost Y, then I will not be shot up, I will not bounce basically. I moved it very close, just to give the best example. No bounce, I just shot up like that, but if I turn off the boost Y and I jump on it, big bounce! Look at that. Easy. In the particle episode, we made this giant object, and I might want to put this as high detail, say it was lagging. I don't know how laggy this actually is, but just pretend it's laggy, okay? I'm gonna put this on high detail, which is gonna be found at the top of the object options. I'm gonna save and exit. This level is not in low detail mode. You can see this is turned off. So when I play, this particle will be right here and I can play with it. Now, if I go back and I turn on low detail mode, that high detail object will be deactivated in this mode. But don't worry, I can get it back just by turning off low detail mode. There it is again. So it's a nice little optimization option. I can put a saw blade right here. And as long as I have no touch enabled, which is right here, I can just go straight through this saw blade when normally, if I turned that off, it would kill me. Look at this, bang, turn it back on, go through it. It's, it's amazing, this is so cool. You can use actual objects as details now. Slopes have weird hitboxes in the game, so what you could do is just turn off the collision like this and just use them as details. It's very simple, I like it a lot, it's very neat. Similar to that, we have passable objects. These are objects that you can jump straight through and land on the top. Just like Mario, those little platforms that you can jump through and stand on, you can just do that. When normally, you would just hit your head and hurt yourself and just get stuck. Now, in the past, we used to use group number one or just a number. 
there would be at the start of all of our levels on an alpha trigger like this to hide an object. This would just be used to like block the player in like this just to make sure you can't jump at the start of the level. It would be invisible and it would be like, okay, well you can't jump. Well now, you don't even need group one. What? Wrong button. You just have to delete this and remove group one. You don't need it. Extra hide. Boom. Hidden. F6 shows invisible objects as being visible, which is really cool. It's just a much better version of the alpha group number one or whatever group people were using. I think it's epic. So let's just say I have a moving object here. It's on group number one. We're going to move it back and forth very simply. I'm just going to go 30. And then after that, it is going to move 30 back the other way. Let me just use the loop feature that I haven't explained yet, but just as an example, this block is going to move from side to side. If I jump on this, I will move with it. But if I turn it off just like this, Ooh, non-stick X, non-stick Y. Very nice. I can just drop off this. It's kind of interesting. I don't know. It's a weird little gimmick. I would probably mark this in some way if you were using it, but you can make like a cool little moving platform. Do you have to stay on if you were jumping? Extra sticky. When the player stands on an object that moves down too fast, the player will not stick to the block anymore. Putting a start pause up at the top with this big spinning object that I haven't removed yet. Let's just say this object is on group number one, right? And we move it down extremely quickly. Like, just right as the level starts, we're gonna move down like 200 blocks really quickly, like 0.2. So this is just gonna drop and we're gonna fall down after it. I don't know if you can see that. Let's just do it again. We'll zoom out. Uh, boom, we're just falling right now. What we wanna do to fix this is make this extra sticky. Right here, here we go. Wee! What? Really? Is that like, where's the extra, extra sticky, Rob? There we go. That stuck us. That was not natural. There was no way that would ever happen in vanilla GD. We're, we're all the way down. I think it was just too fast. I didn't. There's no like extra, extra sticky. We need that. But yeah, this is working. Very neat. Extended collision. Objects with a scale larger than a value of six have inaccurate hitboxes. And this option fixes the hitbox. Um, I'm not sure why it doesn't just do that by default. Ice block, only usable for platformer. This option makes blocks slippery, so the player slides further. Let's put a block right here, and let's put a block right here. So, this bottom one, I'm gonna make blue, just to indicate that it's slippy, and then make it ice block. So if I go into a cube real quick in platformer mode, and we just stand on this block, I am sliding. So I'm clicking the button, and I'm just kind of gliding over the blocks, whereas usually... Let me onto the block, please. Let me onto the block, thank you. Normally, it's a lot more responsive. This one, eh, eh, eh. Whoa, oh, I could probably slide right off the block. Yeah, look at that, and I just stop. That shows you the difference right there. Boom, grip slope. So, if I stand here, I am sliding down. Wow, if I grab this and I put on grip slope, I should be able to stand here, right? Yo! Okay, that's neat. There's still a bit of momentum there, but it's cool. I like it. No glow. There's a picture for this. Disables the glow emitted from solid objects and spikes as seen in figure 6.5. I want to test this out still. I'm pretty sure these objects are the glowiest ones in the game. You can even see it on the image, the glow that happens when you click it. Regular blocks have this too, but it's not as noticeable. I might have to warp this extremely large for you to even see. You can't even see unless you're in normal mode, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you see there's a natural glow there. Then, I can just turn it off by putting no glow. I'm pretty sure there used to be a button in the edit object down here, but it's much more accessible in the extra options. You can just go no glow, and then everything is nice and solid, and there's no weird edge to it, which is cool. I like that. Boom. Oh! oh! Then, I saw an option for no particle. When you go in, these portals have a lot of particles. All you have to do to turn those off is just go right here. Boom. Bam. But Turn off the particles. Then go in normal mode, and there's none. It's not just fantastic. Lots of control here. Scale stick. By default, the player's X position will not change when standing on a scaling object. With this option enabled, the player's position moves to the corresponding distance. Okay. Oh boy, this is going to be a difficult one to set up. Okay. Group number one. We place a scale object right here. Number one. And we scale it to 10 times, for example, on the X and the Y. So apparently when you stand on this, it doesn't change your position. I didn't know that. Let's test it. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. What do you mean? Yet, yeah, what do you mean? No, it doesn't. It does. Scale stick. Are you sure? It does. I feel like I'm moving more. Let me see. Let me see. That one's a wiggly line. Let's just test that out. 
Uh, turn that off and try again. Here we go. Oh, we're moving straight up. Oh, no, it does make a difference. It does make a difference. So if you're on the very far left of the block, you're moving up with the corner as opposed to moving just straight up um, right, here, right here. See, I'm going straight up. I'm not moving with the corner. No matter where I stand, I'm going straight up. So this basically makes it so you can preview a touch trigger now. No audio scale. Disables pulsing orbs and pulsing objects. Wait. So I can have a static orb now, just realized. If I go here, and then go extra, and go no audio scale, and I go in game, that's so cursed! That is so- I don't like that at all! Oh god! That's a part of GD's core! This is changed to display preview, and this is changed to- Just edit the playback, I'm pretty sure. This is no longer relevant, because the game updated since the manual came out. Okay! We made it! Oh my goodness, there's gonna be such a long section. I'm gonna have to make so many videos on this! Oh my god. We're, we're officially at like the deep stuff. This is crazy. Well, I hope you're excited for all of this. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this John Tratash Editor Guide Grind episode. Check the links in the description, leave a like and subscribe, and have a good day.